Okay, so like I said, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Susan Ferguson. I'm the director of the Addictions, Drug, and Alcohol Institute um, here at UW, or ADAI as we're affectionately known. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the symposium today on cannabis, schizophrenia, and other psychotic disorders, moving away from reefer madness towards science. So as you're hopefully aware, this is a hybrid Pardon. symposium. Pardon. And it's going to be hard for you to hear me, but... Oh, say, come again? What'd you say? Or not talking to us. Okay, never mind. Well, as, as just indicated by the, the voices from on high, we are a hybrid symposium. And uh, to date, as of this morning, we have 577 people registered. More than half of those folks are from Washington State, which is, I think, a really great thing because this event is sponsored by the cannabis dedicated funds from the state given to the University of Washington and to ADAI. And I want to give a special shout out to a couple of folks that are joining us today. We've got Rep. Lauren Davis, as well as Representative Shelley Kloba. We also have the director of the Liquor and Cannabis Board, Liquor and Cannabis Board, Will Lukella, and board member Jim Volendroff. Okay, so in addition to the folks from Washington State, we also have registrants from 22 other U.S. states and 11 other countries, including Mexico, Brazil, India, Canada, the U.K., and Australia. And so this is the fifth symposium now that our can about cannabis research that has been organized by our Cannabis Education and Research Program, or SERP, within ADAI, and we are committed to continue to organize these events. Each time, we choose a cannabis research topic that has implications for the health of the people of our state as well as folks around the world. And I think our current symposium is particularly important and timely topic given the recent findings from the annual Monitoring the Future Survey, which is conducted at the University of Michigan and funded by the National Institute on Drug Abuse and provides data on substance use among adults aged 19 to 65. Their report was released just last month, and we're continuing to see historically high levels of past cannabis use among young adults aged 19 to 30. Cannabis vaping, as well as daily cannabis use, are also at the highest they have ever been among this group. And for the first time now, we're seeing females aged 19 to 30 reporting a higher prevalence of past cannabis use than males. And I think in the context of psychosis, these use, use patterns in young adults are certainly concerning as this is the age range where first psychosis is typically seen. So this group is likely to be particularly vulnerable to any adverse effects that emerge with cannabis use. Okay, so in terms of the symposium, this year we're trying a few new things. For the first time, most of the speakers are gonna be presenting remotely, which is great because it allows us to benefit from the wisdom of people all over the world that might otherwise not have the capacity to travel to the US. But as a result, we ask in advance for your patience as we are transitioning from one speaker to another. Our morning will be a total of four presenters with each one located in a different part of the world. Also for the first time, we are interspersing throughout the program and during lunch, three recorded testimonies of young people who have experienced cannabis-induced psychosis or live with a chronic mental health diagnosis that has been exacerbated by cannabis. The videos are short, they range from five to 14 minutes, featuring people who shared their stories with the advocacy group All Brains Matter and Johnny Ambassadors. We, thank to the, we, thank, we are thankful to these organizations and the smart young people featured in the videos who agreed to have their stories shared today. And there's some novelty, too, in the selection of our moderators. ADAI strives to work with state and county agencies, so new research knowledge gets to be more than just a published paper, that it become a, can become a tool for new thoughts, actions, policies, and regulations. To reaffirm this purpose, each panel or presentation will be co-monitored by esteemed colleagues working in state agencies, namely the Washington State Liquor and Cannabis Board, the Healthcare Authority, and the Washington Department of Health. Thanks Kristen Haley, Dr. Sarah Oki, Dr. Harrison Fontaine, and Marie Gray for agreeing to be here. Last but not least, I want to name and thank the team behind this wonderful event. The event is led by our uh, ADAI Cannabis Education and Research Program, or SERP. So specifically, I want to acknowledge and thank Dr. Bia Carlini, who's the director of SERP and symposium chair. Also thanks to Sharon Garrett and Lindsay Kellum, who are research scientists within SERP at ADAI, and then our, fant <laughs> and then our fantastic graduate research assistant, Lexi Nims, who dedicated much of her time in the last three months of her work to the logistics of this event. 
I also want to thank other key members of ADAI who made this symposium possible, thanks to both Meg Bruner, who's our Director of Information Services, and Aaron McGraw, our Public Information Specialist. <laughs> and then lastly, we want to thank UW TV, who are orchestrating the technical aspects of the event as they did in previous years, and to Laurel Bay Catering. Sorry for the people who are not in person with us today, you will miss a delicious meal. So please join me one more time in a round of applause for all of these wonderful folks. And now I'd like to turn things over to Dr. Carlini. Thank you so much, Susan. Uh, really appreciate your introductions. So uh, it is 2024, and here we are in a symposium about cannabis and psychotic disorders. And if I were to be asked how I feel as the chair of this event uh, about what's going to happen today, I would say somewhat nervous. Because for many decades now, the idea that cannabis use could somewhat play a role in the development of psychosis uh, and psychosis disorders has been seen with profound distrust, some suspicion even, and sometimes uh, even uh, the reaction is a big laugh. This is in great part because how historically this topic has been presented. Uh, the idea that cannabis can make people quote unquote insane has been around for a long time and has been intertwined with racist anti-immigration anti sentiment. As an illustration, as early as 1925, the New York Times published an article with the following headline, kills six in a hospital. Mexican crazed by marijuana runs amok with a butcher knife. This, this kind of oversimplistic accounts uh, of events were further reinforced in 1936 with the infamous, infamous Reefer Madness movie. Maybe in this movie with a little less racial bias, uh, they picture high school students committing homicides and robbery, descending into quote-unquote insanity because of their cannabis use. As you probably know, the term Reefer Madness is synonymous of a exaggerated and stereotypical, stereotypical portrait of cannabis use consequences to mental health. Unfortunately, the legacy of reform madness has become harmful to our society's well-being. As scientific research advances the knowledge of the strong connection between cannabis use and development of uh, uh, the, uh, psychotic disorders, some sectors of society still tend to dismiss these findings as a modern take of reefer madness propaganda. Our hope is that the impressive lineup we have today will help people to better understand the role of cannabis use play in cannabis psychosis according to science. We also hope that this information will help educate those that are most at risk and encourage our state to take action where action is due. Today, cannabis use is considered by many scientists as the most important preventable risk factor, factor for the development of lifelong psychotic disorders, such as schizophrenia. And please note my emphasis, preventable. Yes, we cannot prevent genetics, but we can prevent behaviors. I strongly hope you don't dismiss this finding as a modern take or reefer madness propaganda, but rather as opportunity to learn and reflect. Is that said, I'm gonna bring uh, Sharon Garrett to get some of our final logistics. Thank you. <laughs>